Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. I'm sorry about the traffic going by. I live on a busy street and I got the fan going because it is really hot and humid out here. Not as bad as it was the day during the afternoon, but it's still pretty hot and humid. Um, so I got some more of these and I want to talk about these. I'll put a link to these down below. You can also check out the link to my Amazon store. I am trying to keep that as updated as possible with all the stuff that I regularly use and find good deals on and like. Um, and I, I make a little money. I make like a little percentage if you buy something on there or whatever. But, you know, it's $15 a month or something. I don't really care about that. But I mainly do it just to make it easier to find the good deals on the stuff that works. Let me get these, let me get these things untangled here. Hang on. Um... So I, I've had a few sets of these and I lose them every so often and um, I, I wanted to get more of them in the garage and still have a complete set to keep them in my mobile. Uh, you rarely need all of them, right? But it's a good idea to have extras all the time. But these are really good alligator clips cables. They're about, oh, about four feet long, um, but they're really nice and super flexible. These stay super flexible, even in the sub-zero temperatures. They're like a silicone type of wire. Uh, they have really good insulators, really good, easy to use, but strong clips. I mean, they're, they're these are pretty stiff because they're new, <laughs> but yeah. So um, these are really good cables to use for testing stuff to, to make that connection to hook up to uh, some sensor or some scope or clip onto a T-pin or a back probe wire or that kind of thing, right? They're they're really handy. They're really nice. Uh, I've never had one break or go bad, but like I said, when you're working in mobile and car dealerships and alleys and behind buildings and fields and you have a tendency once in a while to leave something behind when you're on your way to your next job. So that just is the cost of doing business sometimes. I try to keep up with my stuff, but you know, diagnosing three or four cars a night in the summer, you know, you're gonna lose stuff. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I would highly recommend if you're gonna do any electrical work on a car and you need some jumper wires. Um, another thing that I'd recommend is one of these. And I, I don't know that I have this on Amazon. I don't know if I got it on Amazon. I'll look and see if I can find one. I'm sure they're out there and I'll put a link to it down below if I do and put it in my store. Um, but these, this is a really long set of cables. <laughs> that you can really stretch out. These are important when you need to get a ground back to a fuel pump, right? When you need to get something back. And then you can just wind them back up when you're done with them. And they stay nice and neat in your toolbox. Um, it's gonna be really handy if you just gotta get some quick power to something to test it from the battery. Um, these can be really good. <laughs> Okay, I took more of it out than I needed to. Um, I don't know how many feet this goes to. It does, oh, it's 30 feet. They, these go out 30 freaking feet. Now, obviously under load, there's gonna be quite a bit of voltage drop on this low gauge cable at 30 feet. But for testing low current loads, these things are absolutely great to have and to keep you nice and neat and organized. Um, so I'd highly recommend these. Especially if you don't have a power probe. I have a power probe. I might get it out here in a minute and let you take a look at that. But Eric Go actually sent me my power probe for free. <laughs> Wish he would have signed it. I could have sold it on eBay for like a million dollars. But you know, oh well. <laughs> uh, I don't use the power probe for a whole lot of testing. I just find there's other ways to do the tests that are faster and easier. I do use the power probe though a lot of times when I need to get power in the ground somewhere on the car. And I used it for some tests, right? It, it does come in handy. Um, 
Also, this is probably my most used tool. This is a test light from Harbor Freight. Um, I ground a little notch in it there, right there. You can see that. So that I can fit my alligator clip on there, clip it. Um, and then I waited till Harbor Freight had them on sale for like a buck or something and I bought a bunch of them. And then I just took and soldered and heat shrunk the wires together and made a really long cable. So I can run this all the way back to the battery ground and test anywhere I need to on the car. This is something I use all the time. So that's something that's cheap and easy too. Um, I also have an LED test light. Uh, this will go, I have a link to this. Now you don't, you can use this for normal tests to see if there's voltage there or not, but it doesn't put any load on the circuit. So you can have voltage and still have a back connection that under load has no voltage. But when you need to uh, check if something's high or low coming off of a computer, but you don't want to potentially affect the signal, right? Your test light might make it go low or if you're testing the input to a relay to see if it's high or low, but you don't want to change it, change it or activate the relay, this is a great tool to have, right? Um, that's awesome. Um, I also keep this Logic Probe. This is from Harbor Freight, right? And basically this will light up green or red I'm sorry there's a motorcycle driving really stupid over there uh, but this will this will light up uh, red or green and, uh, but this puts an absolutely no load on the circuit so if you're testing an output from a computer to see if it's normally high or low but you don't want to make it high or low that's this is a good thing to have I don't use it that often but I have used it <coughs> um, so I used to use a tack life meter and I still have that in the garage, but I wanted to get another meter just to keep in my car. Um, or I wouldn't have one in the garage, one in the car. And of course, Amazon banned tack life because Amazon bans all the really good stuff. Um, and so uh, they don't sell anymore. I think they're kind of out of business as a customer. So this is a plus of right? Um, this is like 22 bucks or something, uh, but it has a DC amp clamp. So a lot of these meters that with the clamp that are cheap only do AC. Of course, you need DC for a car. Um, this works really well. Um, this one's actually marked as to what the positive side of the voltage needs to go to. It has this right here, which will read if you have a live AC circuit. Um, and it, it does capacitance, resistance, uh, a diode checker. It has a continuity tester. It reads hertz. It, does, it has a temperature sensor that comes with it. So this meter does a whole lot. Um, and I really like this meter. It worked, it's worked out really well. It's worked as good as the TAC Life one has. Um, the Tac Life one's really nice too, but you can't buy them anymore. So there'll be a link to this uh, down below too. A lot of these DC amp clamp meters start out around 70, 75 bucks for a crappier one than this is. And this comes with all kinds. This comes with two sets of really nice silicone uh, probes, and these probes are Cat three. Um, and uh, it comes with two sets of those. It comes with all these uh, wiring adapters and little pin things and all kinds of stuff. So I think this is a really nice uh, meter to have if you're going to be doing some stuff. So, you know, if you want to see how much how much current the alternator is putting back into the battery, this is a perfect way to do it. Um, but I also keep just this basic little meter. Uh, just something small to have an extra meter and I actually have the other set of probes that came with that one on here because this one came with cheaper ones but I will put a link to this one if they still sell it I've had this for a couple years um, this doesn't do capacitance checking so I, I'm also uh, I'm what's known in AC repair as a cap bandit um, in other words I go and replace the capacitors when 
the, the AC company shows up and it's like, oh, you need a whole new system. It's gonna be $4,000. I go out and I'm like, oh no, you just have a bad cap. There you go, you're working again. I'll spray it out with the hose, make it nice and clean, and I'll, I'll run away for 75 bucks, you know? So, <laughs> um, but this won't check the capacitors, only this will, okay? So, um, I also keep like a 3157 bulb in here because I can use that if I need to put a little extra load on something to see if it's carrying more load. Um, I keep these, um, these are all kinds of like little fuse adapters where you can plug into a fuse box, but measure, you know, hook up to here to do some measurements or something like that. And that's really handy if you need to measure current across the fuse. And then, I have it somewhere, here it is. This is just a little fuse holder. I took and put a couple ends on and I can stick those in most fuse boxes, right? And then I wanna know how much current that's drawing. It's still fused, this has a fuse, so it's not gonna blow anything. I can, whoop, and tell how much current that circuit is drawing. It's really handy if you have one of those really quiet fuel pumps, you can't hear it, you're not sure if it's kicking on or not. Throw this in there and see if it's drawing any current. Um, I also keep these are uh, I think they're a SG tool aid or but they're 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 called tool aid and it's a back probe set. I've bought a few of these over the years because I've lost so many parts out of them. But they come with these really nice little back probes that you can pr back probe with. And honestly, these are thin enough that you can front probe quite a few connectors with them without spreading the terminals. And then it comes with the uh, the wires that you hook up to them. Um, that's a really handy little back probe kit and it's pretty reasonably priced. Um, and then these came with the, uh, these came with this multimeter and they come with this little teeny little pen right here on an alligator clip. This is really handy for front probe and really small connectors. So I've got those in here. And then it also comes with this, which I don't know if you can see it. it has a little tiny hook right there. All right, and that will allow you to get down inside some of those connectors and grab something metal too without spreading out the terminals. So those come in nice and handy. Um, and so um, another thing that I have, I'll put links to these. Now this is a Mako one as a macro label on it, but it's actually just made by Lyle. But these are the relay uh, testers. Um, I had to buy this one off a of macro truck because I needed this specific relay for a specific job I was doing. So I paid, you know, four times as much for it. But <clears throat> um, you can just plug this in, you can plug your relay in on top, and then you can probe all the different terminals that come off that relay to activate the relay or test it or whatever. Uh, they make a bunch of different ones because there are a bunch of different styles of relays. This covers most of the GM and Ford. Um, I have two different kits here. Uh, but you know, your weird Toyotas and stuff, a lot of times you're gonna have to get the other kits for that. Um, so you can invest a lot of money in these. And that's another reason why I tell people I like to work on GMs. Because I have the stuff for GMs. <laughs> But this, this one's actually Lyle branded and it comes with some different, different relays in it. So, uh, those are really handy when you need to work with the relay, like a fuel pump or something. Uh, really handy to get in there and work with that. Um, and then I, I'm not going to get the power probe out. You guys know what a power probe is. If not, you can Google it. And like I said, I wouldn't have bought a power probe, but Eric O sent it to me for free. And I was like, holy crap, Eric O sent me a free, a free power probe. It's, it's, uh, it's just, I'll never get rid of it because it's cool because it came from Eric O. <laughs> <laughs> came from the master of YouTube auto mechanic stuff, you know? So, yeah. But um, that's pretty cool. And I do use it occasionally. Um, so... 
that's what I got for like some basic electrical just type of stuff that you're gonna need to do some basic electrical work on a car. And a lot of these things, like these probes and different things, you'll use them with your scope as well. So, you know, when you get a scope later, you'll you'll still use this stuff. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.